If you live in the Philippines, specifically in Metro Manila, you're probably aware of these concrete barriers along EDSA. They were installed throughout the length of EDSA when the pandemic started to separate the newly created bus lanes. They have been the cause of so many accidents and not very minor ones. Some of them result in major injuries and some result in much, much worse. In this video, I'll explain why they are so dangerous. Modern cars are designed to absorb impact within reason. They have front crumple zones, they have side impact beams, which are all designed to absorb the energy of impact while also keeping the cabin space mostly intact. Now these are routinely put to the test by several organizations that test a car's safety by purposely crashing them. Now you have different types of crash tests. You have front impact tests, you have side impact tests, which would simulate what would happen if you were hit by a car from the side. Most cars nowadays pass these tests with flying colors. Actually, most cars on the road right now have a 5-star or at least a 4-star safety rating. There is one test though that few cars can pass without serious injury to the driver. That's the pole test. If you ever hit anything on the road, one of the worst things that you can hit is a pole. Because they have a very narrow cross-section, the pressure is more concentrated. If you remember your physics, you probably remember this equation. Pressure is equal to force over area. Which means that the smaller the area, the higher the pressure will be. So let's say you have a 1 square meter area. If you apply a force of 500 newtons, you get a force of 500 pascals. If you reduce the area to 1 fourth, you get 4 times the pressure. And that is why you can lie down on a bed of nails without injury because force is distributed over a bigger area. Lying down on a single nail is not something that you see people do. Because the area is much, much smaller, pressure is also much more concentrated. And the higher the pressure, the more likely it is that something will go through something. In the case of the nail, it is guaranteed to penetrate your skin. Cars are generally designed to survive crashes with other cars. And other cars have a pretty big frontal area. Even a Vios is 1,730 millimeters wide or 68 inches. The minimum diameter of an electric pole is about 150 millimeters or 5.9 inches, which is practically like a knife's edge if you're traveling at any decent speed. The, the width of one of these concrete barriers is about the same. The concrete barrier along ETSA is not one continuous concrete barrier. It's made up of many smaller individual concrete blocks. Because it's not continuous, if you hit one barrier, you will likely dislodge it and you're very likely to hit the adjacent barriers at a knife's edge. You could continue on your path and hit the next barrier head on, or worse, you could tumble around and hit one of them from the side. The best case scenario is actually to hit it head on because most of the car's crumple zones are at the front. If you hit one of these concrete barriers from the side and it hits one of the doors with a passenger right next to it, it is guaranteed to be catastrophic. One more thing that makes these concrete barriers really bad is that a lot of times they're not aligned properly. So if you're traveling along EDSA, there's a big vehicle in front of you, you don't see the obstacles ahead, you might find yourself surprised by one concrete barrier that's sticking out. They also have sudden sharp angles, and sometimes they don't have reflectors, or the reflectors are dirty so they don't reflect light, which makes them especially dangerous at night. The accidents that result from these barriers are usually catastrophic, and there have been a lot of them, which makes you wonder why we're still using them over plastic barriers filled with water. I've heard one reason so far, they say that people tend to move the plastic barriers and that's why we use concrete ones. Kasi matigas uro ng Pilipino. 
Now, I don't contest that fact. Matagas talaga ulo ng Pilipino. But this is one case where the solution might not be proportional to the problem. It's easy to put blame on nameless strangers on the road. Nakatulog, mabilis takbo, nag-overtake, maling lane. But what if it's your younger sister or younger brother? Young people tend to be a bit more hard-headed. They should definitely be disciplined. But not with a concrete barrier through the dashboard. I think that's a bit too much. I hope our authorities would take a look at the figures and not just put blame on motorists for these accidents. Some accidents are caused by the not behind the wheel, but some have multiple factors. In a lot of these cases, the barriers are one of those factors. I mean, take a look at this. Do you see the concrete barrier? If I didn't know that there was a concrete barrier there, I wouldn't have known as well until I was too close. Even if the driver was intoxicated, having a concrete barrier in a tunnel with no lights and no reflectors is definitely a major factor in this accident. By the way, most of these concrete barriers have reflectors, but some of them are so dirty that they look black. I mean, take a look at this. I think on a highway as polluted as EDSA, we need more than reflectors. We need actual lights. A lot of these reflectors, if not dirty, are not facing the right way. You'd have to be perpendicular to a reflector to see the light reflected from it. Some are at 45 degree angles, some are lying down, and some are even facing the opposite direction. So it may seem like a lot of these blocks have reflectors, but at night, a lot of them are not going to be visible. I think the best and most economical solution are still plastic barriers filled with water. They're heavy, and they can also absorb impact better. There are concrete barriers that pass international standards. Uh, they're usually longer, they're interlocking, and designed to divert the direction of impact. Ours are nothing like these barriers. Our barriers tend to act like individual blocks when hit, very heavy and very hard individual concrete blocks. When I was teaching my girlfriend how to drive, one of the things that I stressed was to stay away from the lane closest to these barriers, especially at night. I post this video not as flame bait or to start drama. With all due respect to our authorities, I post this out of genuine concern for motorists who are traveling late at night especially those who are close to me.